Okay. So let me, let me, um, we have uh, over 60 people. Thank you, everybody. What I was asking everybody in the Q&A is what I'm saying is, as I go along, if I have time, I'll take a look at your questions or your messages and I'll answer in real time. If not, I'll get to at some point at the very end, I'll answer everybody's questions if you have any. And um, I was asking everybody where they're from. It seems like everybody's from Long Island, uh, which is great. Uh, all of my hidden gems are on Long Island, mostly in Suffolk County, by the way, um, or actually are they all in Suffolk County? But whatever the case is, um, I know I have one person from Arizona and uh, that's great. You know, he's new to Long Island. So this is a great program for people that have been living on Long Island all their lives or somebody that's new. It doesn't matter because you, you're going to find out some new things. Okay, so let's get right into it because this is going to be, uh, it, it might go a little over an hour actually, if it's okay with everybody. Okay, my name is Lance. I'm a school psychologist on Long Island. And uh, I really... You know, people, some people, I, I realize when I go to the city, you're just like, oh, Long Island, or you go to other parts of the country and they say, oh, New York. Or, you know, we have so much here on Long Island at our fingertips. It's just unbelievable. And I've realized it over the years and I've compiled the list and um, I want to share it with everybody. So let's uh, get into it. First one on my list uh, is, um, okay, I'm from Port Jefferson. And um, what a lot of people don't realize is, and um, I'm going to actually be able to mark up the, uh, if you see this, I can mark up the, um, so if you go into Beltaire Gates, okay, and uh, that's in Port Jefferson, it's up the hill, and you go all the way straight, and then um, what you're going to do is, this is Cliff Road, so that's right when you get into the Beltaire Gates, and you get to Anchorage Road, it's right here, okay? You're going to go down all the way down Anchorage Road, and there's a little, there's, there's a Beltair parking lot right here. Do not park there. You're going to get a ticket. However, if you park, there's a lot. It only has six cars. It's free for anybody. Uh, they did that about uh, five years ago because people complained because it was a county park and uh, other people didn't have access. So if you uh, go, you know, try to go, um, I would say, during the week. Uh, you know, if you don't have parking, you really can't enjoy it. So you're going to have to park in one of those six spots. What you do is you, you, you pull out over there and it's just, you, you park and um, it's beautiful. You go right out to this area. It's like, basically, this is the Bridgeport uh, Ferry, Port Jeff Ferry. And uh, so sometimes you'll see it. You just have, you stand right here. You have view, views of everything. There's dunes right here. Uh, there's something called the Pink Mansion right there. Uh, a movie was filmed there with Roseanne Barr and Meryl Streep uh, a, a while ago. Um, they've actually renovated, actually, from what I know, they knocked down that pink mansion. <laughs> it's a whole, uh, whole drama. There's drama. It could be a TV show about that. But whatever the case is, don't park anywhere over here because there are some good views. But you park right down here and um, yeah, let, let's go on. Let's see. So um, oh, I'm just trying to... to um, make it go forward. So just give me a second here, everybody. I'm fairly familiar with this, but I just want to make sure um, I do this right. So, uh, <clears throat> okay. Well, uh, it's it just, I'm just trying to progress this, the slide. Oh, there you go. I don't know why. Uh, so um, like I said, it used to be Bell Park, uh, that's interesting that I didn't know that would come up on the next slide. I'm sorry, guys. Now I know. Um, I guess I have to erase that sort of stuff. Um, okay, the area that you see was dug out. Um, it was part of a massive sand and gravel mining operation. Uh, they actually dredged that area out, and they brought a lot of that sand over to the city when they were building Manhattan. Um, but there's, there's, like, a lot of mysteries over there. There is... Um, you could see, um, it looks like it's called Pirate's Cove for a reason because they have, pirate, it looks like pirate ships that are like sitting there for hundreds of years. Um, very, very cool stuff. Um, let me see, I just, I'm just trying to see, why am I, oh, here we go. I'll just do it that way. So uh, you can walk to the top of the dunes, which are here, 360 degree view, beautiful. Boats uh, will raft. Rafting is when boats kind of hook up together and I know that's not social distancing, you would think, but I guess, you know, things are kind of calming down and you'll probably see boats doing that. And it's like a party, you jump boat to boat. 
Um, you have to watch off for the sections off areas for piping clovers. Those are birds that are endangered. So make sure you, you stay away from them uh, and you don't go into those areas. Sunset is beautiful, um, really beautiful. Let's go into the next slide. Okay, the next one is uh, St. James. In St. James, it's called David Weld Sanctuary. Another hidden gem. So um, how you get there is there's a parking lot on Short Beach Road. I have the instructions on the handout that I'm gonna be giving out. Uh, it's on Boney Lane, St. James, but you can look it up on your you know, Google. Uh, it's a little weird actually. Uh, it's a little off on Google Maps and I think I, um, maps on um, iPhones, but you'll find it. Uh, David Weld Sanctuary parking lot. So get in there. Again, it's like six cars. It's like really small parking lot. I don't know, uh, these hidden gems are just like, you know, maybe you've heard about this place, maybe not. Um, but it's beautiful, you get in there and um, there's a 2.2 mile uh, hiking trail and you could easily walk to the Long Island Sound, all the way to Long Island Sound, which is really, really cool. Uh, don't park on the uh, street, otherwise you get a ticket. And I just wanna say to everybody, um, before I go any further, that I want everybody to use when you go on any of these trails, there's a couple of um, things I want everybody to understand. Um, no matter how old you are, it doesn't matter. Uh, bring um, a bottle of water with you always. Uh, wear sunscreen or a hat. Put on bug spray, especially ones that repel ticks. Um, be careful about ticks. They're all around. My father got Lyme's disease and he got bitten by a deer tick the other day on the golf course. So ticks are all around. So be very careful about high grasses. And also be careful about poison ivy, and not just poison ivy, there's other plants out there that cause the rash, such as poison sumac. Um, you know, you're talking about, um, I know uh, Virginia creeper, which not many people know about, uh, causes uh, uh, the same exact rash. It has to do with the ureshiol oils. And by the way, any plant that's around it might have the oil, because the oil, and, and pets that you know, go roaming out, if you have a pet, you, you know about that, that they could bring those oils in. So you have to be careful about these things. Um, so just be careful about when you do it now. There's a map uh, of the trails here. I suggest you take your cell phone out and you take a picture of the map of where you're going. I mean, you, you can get lost in there, you really could. So take them, I mean, like, let's say you, and, and don't try to go hiking uh, or on these, and they're not huge trails, but don't go hiking when sun's gonna be setting within a half hour or so. You know, you might get trapped in there when it turns dark. So uh, get in there with plenty of sunlight. Okay, so, uh, and then take a picture of the maps whenever you, you go somewhere. These are just all, I, I just wanna say this to everybody because you know you might not think about it. Um, so as you're walking through, beautiful, and you get to the, um, the beach, the big boulders out there, uh, you can see osprey. Uh, like I said, watch out for ticks. You can climb this, this beautiful bluff overlooking the Long Island Sound, um, really nice. Okay, next one is, oh, okay is Head of the Harbor. And Head of the Harbor, beautiful area for bike riding, uh, beautiful mansions there. Um, it's near the Stony Brook Duck Pond, if people know where that is. I know a couple, I saw a couple people from Stony Brook and Setauket area. Um, what I, I really think this is a hidden gem. Why? Because you don't have to buy any wine to get in. It's free parking, a beautiful uh, renovated sort of um, historic um, vineyards and it's very nice. Uh, it's right, I have the address right here. So um, let me, uh, so uh, you can bring your, and by the way, a lot of these places you could just bring your own food. You, you could just picnic out. You don't have to buy the food there. Um, they expect you to buy the wine actually, and it's expensive. The wine there could cost about, I think it's like $10 a glass or something like this. I, I prefer, if you're gonna really wanna drink their wine, just get the whole bottle because then you get four uh, glasses out of it. Uh, but whatever the case is, David Acker, I met him. He owns Harmony Vineyards and it's a, he's a, he's like a millionaire. He's almost like an Elon Musk sort of guy. He uh, invented a lot of medical technology and uh, sold this uh, invented medical technology. And he has a mansion. If you go there, you can see the mansion right there. And he, he's like, has an observatory there, a very, very cool mansion, but you're not gonna get into the mansion, okay? But you're gonna enjoy these beautiful vineyards. It's open year round. I called them up, everybody. Um, I know with the, the COVID and everything like that, outdoor dining right now is open. 
Uh, and in terms of indoor, you know, that's going to take, um, I think that might be uh, the next phase in phase three, okay? So, but you can go there and it's outdoor uh, only. They have their website, you can check it out. Um, sometimes they have parties there and stuff and, and they close it off for private events. Um, what to look for, live music, oh my God, beautiful. They have uh, acoustic guitarists there, jazz musicians, blues musicians. Look at these views, um, beautiful uh, views. So there's not many vineyards on Long Island, I mean out east that have actual views of water. This is one of the few that has a view of the harbor, the Stony Brook Harbor. Okay, and then this inside areas to uh, dining as well once uh, phase three opens. Uh, next one is right near this. I know the people in Setauk know this very, very well, and the people in Stony Brook. However, I, I got to know it very, very well. Uh, it's Stony Brook. It's Avalon Park and Preserve. Um, it's, it's, um, there's a beautiful duck pond there. You could uh, bring some duck food. They sell some food there. Don't feed them bread. It, it really hurts the environment and the ecology of the, uh, the pond there. Um, but you could walk all around, they have geese there, beautiful swans, uh, just, it's very nice. All different types of ducks, and not just mallard ducks, but some beautiful wood ducks, which if you don't know what they are, they're very colorful. Um, and if you, right now, uh, they're doing renovations, just to let you know, I was just there the other day, and they're doing renovations to the, the hiking trail there in Avalon Park, but they'll open it soon. But at least you can still go there and enjoy the, the, um, the environment there. Um, once it, they do open it up after the renovations, you'll be able to go in there. They have um, a labyrinth. They have, uh, it's dedicated to Paul Simons, by the way. Paul Simons is the son, okay, of Jim Simons. And, and who that is, he's one of the richest people basically in the world. And in New York, I think he is, he is the rich, richest person. He, he founded uh, Renaissance Technologies that runs out of Setauke. Anyway, to make a long story short, uh, his son, uh, I think at around 27 years of age, he was an avid biker. He liked nature. Uh, he did mountain climbing. And uh, unfortunately, he was riding on a street. And uh, they don't have a really like a lot of good bike, bike lanes in some areas. And an old woman, I think it was an old woman, like hit him, you know, accidentally because he was kind of like just, you know, it was an unfortunate accident and he died. And Paul Simons, uh, it's dedicated to. Um, let's let's go on, uh, and that's why that's you see that statue, and there's a um, there's a there's a poem somewhere over there uh, to the side. Uh, one of his good friends wrote. Um, beautiful uh, areas. They have uh, wildflowers. They have this cool thing called uh, Cartus al Cielo, which means letters to the sky. And there's a little um, thing where you could write little letters to people that have passed, and um, it sends out love to the uh, the heavens. Uh, there's uh, again, watch for ticks for sure. There's beautiful butterflies. Uh, there's a labyrinth, very cool stuff. Lavender by the bay. Okay, I just called them the other day. Um, beautiful, beautiful. Lavender right now is in bloom. It's starting in bloom, and it's going to go to um, the beginning of Ju uh, July. So now, right now, is the time to get there. There's two locations. There's one in Calverton, and that's the closer one, you know, uh, in terms of west. And then there's one all the way out east. So, um, you know, I would really definitely go there. They close off the fields, unfortunately, though. So you can't walk through the fields and take those really good uh, social media photos. However, you could go there, buy their products, and just get really good views of the fields from the outside, just to let you know. Um, the, the largest bloom, they say, is expected in early July, but right now they're just starting to bloom, so it, it's a good time even uh, this coming weekend. Uh, I've seen a lot of lavender in bloom. Uh, there are fees to enter the fields, but right now you can't enter the fields, but uh, I spoke to them. They said they're, they're trying to determine when that will happen, so you could always check up with their um, website. Uh, what to look for, both varieties of uh, lavender, there's English and French. Um, there's a shaded pavilion, that's the one all the way out east. There's a farm shop with they have all, make lavender into soaps and to just different perfumes. Uh, obviously, you want to take a picture in the lavender fields and uh, you could just, just beautiful. I mean, really, I mean, <laughs> a purple field, I mean, that's just, just unbelievable. It's like heaven. Uh, oh, I, I put a little bit of history of the farm here. Um, I'm not going to read all of this. Uh, it's, it's a little wordy for my little uh, presentation here within an hour. But look into the, uh, the website. It's a, it's a cute little um, story about uh, how they met. 
and um, they worked on a kibbutz, and then they moved to France, I believe. Uh, and then they brought, brought Lavender back. Uh, read the story. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to, you know, uh, kind of rush everybody, but it, it's a nice little cute story about the owners. Uh, next one, number six, is Blydenburg County, County Park. Now, it is a county park, so you do need uh, what's called a green key card to get into this park. Before um, May 31st, before, uh, I mean, Memorial Day, it was free, but now there is a fee to get in. However, uh, I believe if you are a senior, it is free um, during the week. Okay, during weekdays. Uh, let's and, and obviously for wounded veterans and whatnot, you can get passes for free. For vets or, or uh, people with disabilities, there's discounts. Uh, that's called the green key card that's for the Suffolk County. And then by the way, Nassau County has their own card as well. Um, now, what I love about um, this area, uh, this, the, the Nissaqua River is just beautiful. I go there, my favorite time to go there is during autumn because you just get to see all the trees and the foliage is just beautiful, all the different colors. Um, and like I said, need, the green key card is a discounted rate. It, it depends. Um, but if you just want to enter for the day, it's seven, I think it's $7. But it's, it could be worth it. They have a dog park there uh, for really like large dogs. They have one for small dogs off the leash. Uh, very cool. I just go, I don't have a dog right now, but I just like to go there and just watch the dogs play. I just love to watch the dogs. You can go on these, you see this horses, uh, people on horseback riding. Uh, plenty of trails all around. Um, you could get lost a little bit. I, I would try, but there's not many trails that go off the main trail. So if you just keep on walking, you'll find your way around or just turn back to where you were. Uh, this people on kayaks and rowboats. Uh, people can't just have camping grounds, fishing, playground for the kids. Beautiful. Next one is uh, great. People in um, Oakdale in that area will know this area. It's Great River. Uh, Bayard Cutting Arboretum State Park. It's a state park. You need an Empire Pass uh, to get there for free, or there is a fee. Again, seniors are free uh, during the week. And um, I just want to say that if you, any museum, I mean, any um, library that you're a member of, you can get something called a Museum Key Pass. And that lets you uh, into uh, any state parks for free. You just have to reserve it. So that's called the Museum Key Pass, I believe. And just look into your local library. Um, it, it lets you get into lots of museums for free and lots of state parks. Just I'm just letting you know. There is a fee to get in. Okay, it's $8 uh, after Memorial Day. But again, I'm just trying to let everybody know that you don't have to pay that and there's ways to get in for free. Um, it's closed Mondays, just to let everybody know. But it is beautiful, my God. I think right now and, and is just a nice time to be there in the springtime and going into the summertime. Uh, they have a lot of flowers. It's an arboretum, so they have all different types of uh, trees. See this, this um, weeping, um, it's not a willow, it's a weeping birch tree, I believe. You can walk under there and, and underneath it's just a whole nother world. It's very cool. Um, they have, I don't know if people know what dahlias are, but they're uh, the most beautiful variety of flower that exists in the world. Uh, and they have a dahlia uh, society there and they have a show there. Uh, dahlias are in bloom uh, late August, early September, I believe. Um, and uh, beautiful, I was there and I just, I couldn't believe the beauty of these, these flowers. Uh, and they have a little tea house in the mansion there. Uh, you could actually eat something and have some tea. It's an outside dining there, so I'm, uh, I, I was there like right in the middle of the pandemic. So it's open, you know, the parks, it's a park, so you can just walk around. Uh, they do give tours of the mansion in there, but right now I don't know if they're doing that. Um, okay, uh, next one, eight, uh, let's see how I'm doing on time here. Okay, good. Holtzville uh, Wildlife and Ecology Site. Uh, the zoo is closed down there um, right now. However, uh, it's, 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 it's they have it's great for kids you know they have like llamas and they have bears and uh, eagles and buffalo and I'm just trying to think a lot of whole a lot of stuff it's actually located in a reclaimed landfill they actually took this landfill and they just like made trails around it. it's like this these hills and you're like wow beautiful but these hills were landfills and you wouldn't know they grew grass on top of it you can get free compost there too which is pretty cool and they have a, a beautiful greenhouse in there 
Uh, they have exercise trails are really cool. So I, like I said, the zoo is closed. And you're like, why did you put this on the list? I mean, this is uh, the exercise trail is very, um, very popular. Everybody's going around. They have different stations to work out. Um, so really cool area. I would check it out. And especially once they open up the zoo and the greenhouse, um, it's definitely a place to go. Next on my list. Okay. Like I said, this is on my list. It is closed right now because of the pandemic, but it will be opening shortly. So just be patient, um, is Ohika Castle. Um, I've been there plenty of times and I've been there at no charge. Uh, but you know, there's different events there. They have, um, uh, I was there for my wedding. Uh, they have uh, showcases there, um, beautiful stuff. Um, they have events there. Uh, however, if you want to go there, uh, just by the way, this is a lot of history to this. I don't know if people know about it. And I know there's people here in the chat that are from this area, Huntington. Um, let me tell you a little bit about um, Ohika Castle. It was built from 1914 to 1919. It's called Ohika Castle because it stands for the, um, the, the owner, who, the original owner, who was o Otto Herman Kahn. He was a, a philanthropist and he was a, a very rich person during those days. And I'm saying during the days of Charlie Chaplin, uh, they have a Charlie Chaplin room in there. He was he 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 was he loved um, rubbing shoulders with people in entertainment. So he would have them there. And this was his summer house. My God, how rich was he? He built up the whole hill. Uh, if you hear about it, you, they have tours of the mansion. Um, so much to learn. Oh, he actually served as uh, inspiration for Gatsby's mansion in um, The Great Gatsby. Could you believe that? And in the film, Citizen Kane, photographs of Ohika were used to portray the fictional Xanadu. And uh, Teleswiss video, Blank Space, was filmed there. So there's a lot, they, they do a lot of stuff. One of the Jonas Brothers got married there. Very, very cool stuff. Gary Malay, Mal, uh, Malias, I met him a couple times. He uh, is now the owner of it, and they use it as like a, um, uh, they use it as a hall to, to host weddings and things like that. Um, he purchased back in the 80s. He actually was shot back in um, six years ago. I don't know if you heard that in, in the news. And he survived it. He was like shot in the eye, basically. Unbelievable. Great guy. Uh, uh, like I said, it was featured in the video for Taylor Swift's Blank Space. And um, that artificial hill it's located on, um, 32 guest rooms. Unbelievable. Beautiful in there. Um, one, uh, by the way, it's the second largest residence in all of the whole United States, just to let you know. Um, the mansion fee, like I said, mansion tours, the fee applies. It's not yet open for that, but pretty soon. Beautiful gardens. Uh, library has uh, faux wood, actually. They had to paint over concrete. They did this because it was burned down a couple times, so they didn't want any wood in there. So the whole mansion is built in concrete, so it's fireproofed. Um, very cool stuff. Uh, okay, next one is Fire Island Lighthouse. Um, again, I know certain libraries offer the museum key pass for this, so you can get in for free. If not, it costs money to get to the top, uh, to walk to the top. It's like 10 bucks, I think. Let me, I, I think I have the, the cost somewhere. Now, this is, a uh, this is, uh, this is, a uh, Fire, Fire Island here. And, um, the Fire Island Lighthouse is right here. Now, if you go to the Fire Island Lighthouse, you don't have to take a ferry to get there. You could just go down to the Robert Moses, uh, beach park over there. Uh, field five, and then they have a trail you can walk over there. Now, when you go to the top, it's beautiful views. Um, and then you can walk back down. You could actually walk to the nearest um, town in Fire Island, which is Kismet. So it's pretty cool. Like if you do that, a lot of people, I didn't realize that until recently that you could just like walk over to Fire Island and you didn't even take the ferry there. Usually people take ferries from Bayshore, Sayville, or Patchogue to get to different areas of Pat, um, Fire Island. Uh, Okay, so uh, again, it's the Empire Pass you need to get to um, Robert Moses, but if you have the Empire Pass, or I mean, if you do the um, library key pass, look into your local library, you can do it for free. And it's eight dollars to get to the top of the fire, uh, the lighthouse. Beautiful uh, walks all around. It's perfect for families. It really, now, if you're not great, if you have some physical limitations, I wouldn't suggest going to the top of the lighthouse. There's very narrow, uh, when you get up there, narrow staircases that wind around. Uh, so just, you know, you have to be, I guess, sort of limber, I guess you could say, and flexible to get around. Um, and then it's a 10 minute walk over to Kismet, beautiful. Uh, and then I, there's a lot of history to that. And uh, you could look into that history as well. Uh, beautiful photos, by the way. 
Okay, number 11. I hold this close to my heart because I live right around here. It's a Setauken and Port Jefferson Greenway Trail. Uh, plenty of different parking all around. You're gonna have to look that on uh, the internet, but uh, there's uh, tr the trail and park uh, points. There's parking at Limroy Lane and Setauken. That's near Renaissance Technology, by the way. Uh, and then Halleck Avenue and uh, Port Jefferson Station, that's right off of 112. And there's other parking off of like Gnarled Hollow and other areas. If you bike, if you have a baby, if you rollerblade, whatever you do, skateboard, it's, it's a great, great area. There's no cars on it and it goes uh, through three towns and they want to make it go uh, pretty soon. They got approved to go all the way out to Wading River. So it's, right now it's 3.4 miles. It's known as the Satoka Greenway Trail. And it's like great. I, oh my God, I bike and it's great for biking because the, the, it's good exercise. Nice hills, beautiful scenery and no cars. And by the way, when you o go over a main road with cars, uh, the, you know, there are some like Old Town Road and things like that. Um, there's good technology that warns cars uh, that you're coming. Um, and what to look for is, it, oh, again, autumn is beautiful. Any time of the year, really, um, especially now is very nice. All, all the leaves are in. Um, Take a look. In, in any local town, you probably have some sort of bike trail, but this one for Suffolk County in this area uh, locally is very nice. Um, in this area, Mount Sinai Cedar Beach is very nice uh, beach. Um, it's They have a nature center there, which is closed, but it's going to be opening. Um, if you have um, a Brookhaven, this is for a Brookhaven um, pass. So, I, so, so far I talked about state passes. I talked about county passes for Suffolk County or Nassau County. And now I'm talking about actual uh, Brookhaven town, you know, so if you live in Smith Haven town or other towns, you're not gonna be able to get that sticker, which is only $15. So uh, for the whole season, but if not, you have to pay for the uh, day. Uh, but there are places to park outside their parking lots that you can just walk around, walk, over there, um, you know, in, in the residential areas, you just have to walk a little further. Um, but it's nice, they have just like a bar right on the water, that's that's gonna be open. Um, again, look for uh, look out for Poison Ivy. Ralph's Fishing Station is beautiful, they have a pier there, concession stand, basketball courts, they have a nature center. Okay, Sweet Briar Nature Center, how to get there, um, it's it's right in Smithtown, um, and it's, it's a beautiful um, area, they have a butterfly, <laughs> um house there uh they have wildlife yoga it's free admission to park there uh they're gonna have musical variety shows outside for a lot of children programs um right on the nissaquag river you could get lost in those trails there so really you know take a picture of the trails before you go have a map uh i was walking around and i was like wow i kind of got a little like you know disoriented it, it's kind of you know there's a lot of little trails and trails off trails Let's take a look. Like I said, they had a butterfly house there. It's a little extra money, but it's worth it. Um, art classes. Uh, they have for kids, they have rainforests and woodland exhibits, educational things. Um, very nice. They have a wildlife re rehabilitation there as well. So they have ospreys and, and they have like almost like a little zoo there, I would say. Um, so pretty cool. Uh, let me check uh, questions. Let's see. Uh, let's see chat. I'm going to, because I haven't. Um, we live in Nassau County, can we go? I think you were talking about, let me, let me actually, let me see uh, from the beginning. Um, oh, uh, S. Genty is a school psychologist too. Very, very cool. Uh, this will be emailed to everybody, yes. Um, I will make sure, okay. Um, uh, what's the name of the place? Oh, in Mount Sinai, that was uh, Cedar Beach, okay. So that was Cedar Beach. Okay. Um, Cedar Beach Nature, so there's a nature center there as well. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me go on a little bit. Da, da, da. I hope everybody's enjoying it. Next one is uh, on Fire Island. I called up the Fire Island Ferry Service. It goes out of Sayville. Um, usually it gets right to Sailor's Haven. However, right now they're not running to Sailor's Haven, I found out, but pretty soon they will be. So you would have to go to the nearest uh, one. Uh, what, what, let me see what I wrote down. I just want to make sure to give everybody the, the correct information. Um, you're going to have to go to Cherry Grove. You're gonna show, you, you go from Sable to Cherry Grove, and then you could actually walk on the beach or you walk on, through the towns to get to Sunken Forest. The ferries run for, to, from uh, Sayville to get there. 
they're dominated by American holly, the SMA beautiful trees. It's very cool. They have the boardwalk that goes through. Your dog can come along uh, on the ferry. Uh, there's, there's um, you know, it's open to pets. Uh, and the, by the way, a lot of the places that I have on my list are pet friendly. Some aren't. You'd have to call up ahead of time if you want to bring your dog to certain places. Um, what to look for? There's uh, wildlife, interesting birds, rare trees. You take, can take a water taxi, by the way, and go anywhere. Uh, any other part of uh, Fire Island once you're there. So take the whole day. Bring water with you. Make sure they don't have any uh, concession stands anywhere around there. Sailor's Haven is a nice little community for boaters and campers. Um, next one, Kings Park, uh, Sunken Meadow. Now, some people are like, yeah, I knew all about this, but you know what, maybe you didn't, because I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it. Um, yes, again, uh, it's a state park, so you could go to your local library and get that Empire Pass for the day, you reserve it, and you can get it for free. If not, um, I believe seniors are free during the week, and there's discounts for the Empire Pass as well. Um, there's a beautiful three-quarter mile boardwalk right along the... Um, right along the beach and the beach is very sandy by the way you would think wow this is the north shore uh, yeah i think they actually uh, trucked in the, the sand actually i'm not joking around uh, because there's no sand like that uh, anywhere on the north shore usually it's very rocky but it's like uh, you know very nice sand uh white groomed and uh there's also what many people might not know oh and by the way you can see connecticut very very clearly from there uh you could look into these little viewfinders and you don't even need to you can see it, it looks like it's so close um, dogs are able to use the trails, beautiful bridges. Um, this is that trail that I was talking to you about that many people might not know, like besides the boardwalk, beautiful trails that go all along in there that you can walk along, uh, run, you know, it's just beautiful. I, I'm really serious. You really have to check out this little, these little areas along this, this, um, inlet here are very, very beautiful. There's lovely bridges that stretch over that sunken, that's called sunken metal Creek. They have charity runs there. Um, lots of wildlife and, and plants. Next one, um, some people might know about this and some people might not. And I had to put this on my list because I do think it's a hidden gem. It's in Manorville, out east. So the people out east might know about it. Um, it's Shrine of Our Lady of the Island. Um, okay, it's in Manorville. Again, you dress, uh, you should get the sheets after the, um, the presentation. So uh, this area was established by missionaries of the Company of Mary, in 1953, 70 acres of land in Eastport were donated to Montfort missionaries for a shrine for the Mother Mary. Then in 1957, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, John Harrison of East Merchants gave the gift of the rock. That's right here. Um, they do church services there. But by the way, you don't have to be religious. You don't have to be Christian to enjoy this area. Um, I'm not actually Christian, and I enjoy this area. It's very peaceful. Um, and you can walk along and just see different little areas. Um, it's, it's kind of almost like meditative, I would say, um, and very serene. Uh, starting at the end of April, Sunday Mass is outside. So, I mean, you know, they're doing that, uh, you know, those church services. And they do it. One of the highest points of Long Island is right here. So check it out. I, I think they have, um, after Mass, you can pray. And now, by the way, if you if you are a religious person, it's a perfect place as well. You could pray uh, at the outdoor stations of the cross and the outdoor rosary walk. So they have different stations of the cross all throughout. And there's also a really cute large gift shop with religious items from around the world. And they have a coffee shop there as well. So, you know, it's not the typical type of church that you would think. It's, it's much, much different. Um, and it's good for everybody and good for the whole family. Um, cut shot bridge. Any questions uh, so far? Let me take a look. Uh, let me see if I have questions. Let's see. Uh, are you sure sunken is dog friendly? Um, I'm thinking right now. Uh, okay, as far as I know, I I would say yes. Yeah, I would say yes. It is because I know I was there just recently. I saw plenty of dogs. So yes, the answer is yes. Uh, the bluff is beautiful. Uh, the fear of ticks has kept us away from places. Is the fear valid or should we venture out? No, venture out. What I say is just don't go anywhere with um, high grasses or, you know, anywhere that there's like grasses that are more than, let's say, uh, I would say like six inches high, you know, stay away from that. But anywhere that, other than that, anywhere on my list, you know, is for the most part good, unless there's, uh, you get to some trails that are very uh, narrow. Uh, I would stay away from that if you're afraid of ticks. 
Uh, Avalon is closed now. But yes, Avalon is closed now because of construction of the trails. But like I said, the the, um, the pond is open and that whole area around there is open and they have um, beautiful uh, views there. So you could still go there. Um, a path from Old Dock is dog friendly, but I didn't know the park was. Uh, the Sunken Meadow, yes, yeah, it is. So, um, you know, enjoy. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, screen, maybe refresh your page. Okay. I think I answered everybody's question so far. Okay, good. Um, now I'm on to Bridge Lane. Now, this is, uh, I put this on my list because this is not even a, um, a park or anything. I wanted a, a nice variety. Uh, Kutchog is out east on the North Fork. And believe it or not, Bridge Lane is something you, you might easily miss. It's just a street. But why did I put it on my list? Well, I will tell you. <laughs> Um, first of all, there's, you won't see this per se, I put this, this photo here, but you do see these beautiful uh, vineyards, views of vineyards. Um, and um, hold on, let me, let me. It's, just, it's just a really serene sort of, I, I can't explain it, it's almost magical, I would say. Um, you pulled your car off to the side of the road, it's not really even parking really, but there's a dirt shoulder, just get out and just take some photos. And there's a little uh, cute uh, train trestle there. I don't know what else to say. You're not going to go all the way out east just for that. But I mean, while you're out east, it's something to definitely check out this little street. Um, so I had to put it on my list because it's something I found. I went to look for, um, oh, these are all the wineries out on the North Fork. So they're all going to be opening up pretty soon because they have outdoor dining. Um, Railroad Bridge is beautiful. Great views of vineyards. Wind turbines in the distance. Uh, old barn, sunset. Uh, and then stop by Brymer Farms and grab one of their famous pies. I'm not advertising for them. I'm just saying they're the best pies on Long Island. So, um, and, and you know what I mean if you've been there. And you know the lines that form there. So that's not too far away. Uh, Mattituck Love Line is another street that I think you definitely should check out. It's in Mattituck, um, again, on the North Fork. And Love Lane, I mean, how, I saw this a while ago. I said, I got to check out Love Lane. And then I found out about Love Lane. It's actually Mattituck's main street. Um, and uh, let me go back to that one. It was established, Mattituck was established in 1678. They have an annual street fair. They have a Little Miss Mattituck contest. Beautiful. I feel like you're transported like, to the 1950s or something when you're on that street, 1960s. I mean, it's just, it's just a serene, magical area. That's all I could say. They have, uh, it's a quaint, small town with old-fashioned charm and that's in my language just how i think it is uh love lane kitchen my god again I don't, I don't work for love lane i don't advertise for love lane kitchen but my god it's just so cute this is it right here it looks like you're in somebody's kitchen and they treat you so well and the food is cooked from the heart it really i'm not kidding it just i look forward to going there every time i'm out on the north fork um village cheese shop they have lombardi's love lane market uh, Roanoke Vineyards, uh, you know, they have annual strawberry festival there, oh. and um, strawberry fields. This is um, Lombardi's uh, Love Lane Market right there, and uh, very nice. Okay, next on the list, um, again, you could get the museum pass to get into the museum, but you don't even need the museum pass because uh, there's free parking there, and you don't even have to go to the museum to take in the beauty. Um, this is in Sayville. I saw this people in Sayville in this media in this uh, Zoom, and so you you the people from Sayville and the surrounding areas know well uh, about this. Um, the admission to the uh, again this museum it's a boat museum is eight dollars. However, you could get in free through your library, uh, free parking anyway. So don't worry about that. Uh, explore just around. Forget about the museum. Just explore. I put this on my list. Just explore around the marina. Beautiful views. And it's a historic boat building there. Uh, and then um, in August, they have a seafood, seafood festival. I mean, I don't, I, I'm pretty sure it'd probably be going on this, I don't know, in the, in the COVID, this, I know last year it was going on. So you have to check into their website to see if this is going on, but cool seafood festival. Uh, they have boat rentals there, fishing, uh, walk to the pier. Uh, and <laughs> I always say, look for Pokemon Go players because there's lots of Pokestops. And you'll see people just like on their phones like, you know, just looking around, like, what are they doing? That's what they're doing. <laughs> Beautiful. Look at look at this old, um, you know, boat uh, museum, uh, and it's it's a boat building. It's really uh, functional. People, they're still using it. Um, last on my list is Hexer Park, and I don't mean Hexer State Park. 
Okay, don't get it confused with Hexer State Park. I mean, Hexer Park, it's in Huntington, and I saw people from Huntington here, uh, and I just want to let everybody know it, that are from Huntington, even if you are from Huntington, this is a great place to go. Um, it was a gift from August Hexer. He was German-born American capitalist, philanthropist, rich guy, and uh, he donated this land, and it is beautiful, 18 acres. You can walk right to Huntington Village from the park as well. This is a little map. And you can see they have a pond there, weeping willows, swans. They have a museum there. They have uh, the stage there, the art stage there. They host a lot of different things over the summer, different festivals. Um, so there's the Harry Shapin um, Rainbow Stage, uh, the Summer Arts Festival, Huntington Annual Fall Festival. Uh, by the way, Harry Shapin was, was he was um, a Huntington native uh, for, for a while. And uh, he died an early death on the LIE, he was struck by uh, like a, a tractor trailer, I believe. A great musician, but uh, that's why they named it after, uh, that stage after him. He, he donated, uh, he was a philanthropist as well. He donated a lot to, to the arts. Um, they have a tulip festival, is beautiful. Uh, and the Museum of Art is great as well. And um, again, to get entry into that, you, there's, a, there's a charge, but you could also get that museum pass. Okay. Honorable mention. Let's see how we're doing on time here. We're doing perfect because I want to leave this open. Uh, actually, I kind of cruised through this faster than I thought because this is uh, Zoom and I'm not dealing with questions uh, like I usually typically do. So I was able to get through this faster, but I'm glad I did because now I get to go through all my honorable mentions, which, which is a lot, and I have more on my list as well. Um, at this point, uh, I'm going to um, tell everybody to take a quick little uh, breather. Uh, if you need to go to the bathroom or anything like that, and then come back, okay? Because I know some people might want to, they don't want to miss anything. So take a two minute break, okay? I'll be right back. Okay, got my water. Okay, any questions up to this point? Um, the people out of here right now, let's take a look. Um, you work near Hexer Park. Okay, that's good. And uh, that's very good. The concerts, that's true. Very good. Um, 
Thank you. I've heard wonderful things about Connecticut State Park as well. It's on my list. Okay, Nicolette. I'm looking forward to the reopening of Plaza Cinema and Mac. Oh, the, yeah, and Patchog. Wonderful foreign and independent films. Th that's a good one. Uh, Mike. Okay, you know what? I like to hear other people's uh, recommendations as well. Uh, the path from, uh, the, yeah, the cheese shop. I, I mentioned the cheese shop at Love Lane. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. At this question, uh, at this time, let me open it up to questions. So, um, any questions or any other recommendations that you don't see on my honorable mention uh, or haven't spoke about so far that you think are hidden gems or uh, anything about my presentation that you thought was um, something you didn't know and you were like, wow, I'm glad I know it now. So, um, we have a um... Just yeah. a comment from somebody that they believe that the state of New York is still waiving entrance fees until further notice be possible. To where? To, wait, the state, you mean to state parks, you mean? Yeah. Oh, uh, because I know, uh, okay. That's interesting they say that because I, um, I called up and I don't know if that's true. I mean, I definitely know that's not true for um, uh, town parks and uh county parks yeah so, no those are still those are charging oh but you're saying the state parks they're waiving it right now okay yeah that well, would be like well, uh, state that's, park. say that again connect quad state park state parks are still free as of today blydenburg oh good i'm glad you know i wasn't um, I didn't check up on the state parks i did check up on the town and county parks to so know and, and i do know there's fees but with the state parks, you know, that could change at any time, just to let you know. So the information I'm giving, I'm glad it is free, by, by the way. Um, and I'm glad the governor did that, um, Governor Cuomo, uh, you know, just because so, people want to get out um, during this, yeah. you know, pandemic. But I don't know how much longer it's going to be like that. And people have to realize that at some point there's going to be a fee. And um, it's great to go to your local library and, you know, the, that Empire Pass for the day is great. So yeah. uh, I definitely want to mention that. Um, Somebody this, mentioned Flax Pond in Setauket. Oh, is, uh, okay. Who mentioned Flax Pond in Setauket? Could they just say something? Could they just type something into the message? Because I, I don't see that. Uh, yeah, I it's coming up in the Q and A. That's I, why. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, Flax Pond. Okay, Sarah. Okay, I, I, I just want to tell everybody. Um, okay, I know about Flax Pond very well. Okay. <laughs> And what I want to say about Flax Pond is the following. Um, there's ticks all over the place there. There is no real good uh, trails there, per se. They don't, no one really keeps up on, you know, uh, cutting down areas for trails. So you basically have to walk through high grasses to get to the pond. Uh, you're definitely going to get, I would say, definitely going to get ticks. Definitely poison ivy all around. Uh, so for those reasons, I would not put that on my list. However, if you are daring and you are very careful, it is very, very beautiful. And you, you are absolutely right that it's a great area. Uh, it's a very hidden gem, um, Sarah. So I'm glad you said that. But I do know a lot about that. They do have, um, so Stony Brook does research over there as well. Um, but they, it's a beautiful area to kayak, by the way. Um, I used to go there with my friends all the time, but you know, I was like, I was younger. I didn't care about these sort of things like ticks and poison ivy, and now I do. So uh, I would, uh, for the most part, for everybody out there, Flax Pond is, is if you are a little bit more on the daring side, I would say, and you don't mind about that sort of stuff. Uh, and you put on, let's say, pants, you know, uh, so you don't get any ticks and, and poison ivy, then fine. But don't go, I wouldn't, I would be very careful. Do, do, not, do not walk there with flip-flops and shorts. Uh, you're, you're opening yourself up to some problems. Um, Somebody and, said Arthur Coons Park. Uh, where is that? What town is that in? I don't know. Uh, let's see, Arthur Coons. Kings Park. Uh, oh, Kings Park? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know about that park. Uh, do you need, uh, the person that recommended that, do you need, is it free parking? Uh, what is it like over there? Um, is it family friendly? Is it dog friendly? Uh, I don't know who recommended that one. Uh, 
she but, said uh, it is a no 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 fee you park on the street family and dog friendly park on the street huh yeah. see whenever but you have to park on the street i i say like well like why do you have to park on the street you know that's kind of you know, I mean, I don't know how big of a park that is, but I'll look into, I'm writing it down right now, whoever, uh, Arthur Coons. K-U-N-Z. K-U-N-Z Park. That one I don't know about. And, and there's, by the way, there's other ones I've heard about where you could go out east and you could feed birds right out of your hand. Um, I didn't put them on the Elizabeth list. Elizabeth Morton. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yep. Yeah, sorry, yeah, it's Elizabeth Morton. Uh, what kind of park is that? Is that a state park or is that a, uh, Elizabeth... But it's called Elizabeth Morton. I don't think it's, a, it's privately owned. If if anybody could uh, chime in on that. Yeah, it's beautiful though. I know a lot of people that like to go there. But again, I was a little careful to put things on my list that might open people up to ticks and poison ivy and this sort of stuff. And I know that area. There's there's there's. Uh, I know Elizabeth Morton. There is a lot of that. I've been there, and it's not. They don't really. Their trails aren't the best. So. Uh, but it is beautiful, though. I mean, and it is, is, it is a nice place to go. Um, oh, it's a national, national wildlife. Oh, right. It's mm -hmm. national. Is, is, mm -hmm. Does it cost, is there a fee to get in? Or who, who I forgot about. I've been there, but I forgot, it was a while ago. I think you could leave a donation. Oh, it's one of those places where you could leave a donation, but it, it's, it's um, voluntary? Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, oh, L Li Live Seamers. Oh, you know, I, 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 the reason I put that on my list, Sarah, is because um, somebody at one of my other um, Hidden Gems presentations brought this up, and I didn't know about it, and I looked into it. Um, it's good for the whole family. It's good for anybody, as far as I know, but especially younger children. They have a really live, they have a, a small model of a train you could ride on. Uh, so look into that. You know, it's good, especially for a little little kids they love to ride on train like little model trains so uh, i think they have other little programs there as well um so okay so i'm going to go through my honorable mention uh really quickly and then i have some other things on my list that i sent out i want to go through as well so i'm running very well actually. i actually have five minutes but you know i might go a little over old field lighthouse that's in old field which is like satawkin area free to park there beautiful views Deep Wells Mansion, St. James General Store is like the oldest general store, I think, in the United States, right in St. James. Uh, Deep Wells Mansion, they have uh, music festivals and art fairs and things like that there. And they have uh, things for um, Halloween there, too, because there's like spookiness there. Um, Northport, Cow Harbor, Callahan's Beach, beautiful Shirley, Indian Landing, uh, Lake Ronkonkoma County Park, can't go wrong with, Caleb Smith Park, Frank Melville Mo Memorial Park, right in Satoka, you got to check that out. The parking, though, is limited. It's on the street, or they have a little lot for, like, four cars. But really, really nice uh, for photo ops. And just I just love that uh, Frank Melville Memorial Park, especially if you live in that local area. You know what I mean? West Meadow, I, I put I used to put that on my uh, my main list. However, I don't want, you know, I don't want people. That's, um, you need a, a Brookhaven Town sticker to get in there. And I know I put Cedar Beach on my list, but... You know, West Meadow, you need the same thing uh, after Memorial Day. Uh, and they're not doing the same thing as states. Uh, the state is where it, they're, they're waiving the fee. Uh, so if you don't live, if you don't have a Brookhaven Town sticker, then I wouldn't bother with West Meadow, but it is beautiful. Uh, Cold Spring Harbor, Centerport, Vanderbilt Museum. Again, with the Vanderbilt Museum, I know that the museum pass, you could do that. So, right, Kelly, for the Vanderbilt Museum? Yes, the library has, most libraries have that pass. Yes, so that's a nice one, Vanderbilt. Uh, Comstock State Park in Lloyd Harbor. Uh, again, that's a state park. Uh, Lakeland County Park, that's in Islandia. I, I, the reason I put that on there is I drive by it all the time. There's a boardwalk that goes through this like marshy area. It's pretty cool. I mean, I think so. I, I believe it's free park. Uh, it's, a, it's a county park, but I think from what I remember, it's free parking. I, I don't know, like in some areas. I don't remember there being a fee, but maybe it was before Memorial Day. Uh, Cordwood Park in Smithtown, and like I said, Li, Li Live Steamers in Yapank. Uh, let me see uh, my next. Um, okay. Ooh. Okay. So the, the rest of my presentation is in the next couple slides. Um, I love wine. I love beer. I love living, living on Long Island, everybody. Let's see how many people we have right now again. We have 68 participants. Okay, everybody. 
I mean, you have to, even if you don't love wine or you don't love beer, you know, these wineries and breweries that are all around Long Island are just so beautiful. Um, and you don't have to drink any alcohol to, to enjoy it. You could, a lot of them, you could bring the whole family. You could bring pets to a lot of them. Um, I made a whole list on uh, my handout uh, of local wineries that I especially like. So I'm going to go through those. Baiting Hollow Farm Vineyard, uh, it's the closest out east, I would say, vineyard, because it's not all the way far out east from the North Fork. And it's a horse rescue ra ranch as well. So it's really cool. If you love horses, you can get a little tour back there for free of the horses. And it's a vineyard. Very popular, by the way. A lot of people, they truck in uh, buses there from the city. Del Vino, I just found out about recently. It's in Northport. I had, who, who knew there was a, a vineyard right there? Beautiful. Uh, Whisper Vineyards, it's small. It's in St. James. It's very nice as well. Laughlin Vineyard in Sayville. And Martha Clara Vineyard, what I like about that in Riverhead is you can bring the whole family. They have like a petting zoo there and things like that. Now, um, there's also breweries. Um, you can tour local breweries. I, I love IPAs. <laughs> but I, I have on my list that I'm sending out uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like at least 10 breweries that I like that I've been to. Uh, my favorite right now is the Blue Point Brewing Company. Okay, it's in Patchogue. And they took over Briarcliff College. Could you believe that? They took the whole brewery, took over. That's how popular it is. It used to be small. They took over Briarcliff College. And uh, I'm, you have to check whether it's open, but it's going to be open soon. And I love there. They have bands there. They have a lot of great beer. They have uh, great food there and a lot of space. And by the way, babies. I have a baby. I brought my baby there. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> time i brought my baby my baby was five months old you see like little babies there with like the little uh noise canceling headphones or even not they have games for kids on the side there it's amazing these breweries a lot of these breweries and wineries they know that families you know are going to be coming and they're not going to leave their kids at home so they make it family friendly so just keep that in mind just because it's a, a winery or a brewery doesn't mean that you can't bring your babies or sometimes your pets even i know in northport they have surf city i believe and i went inside surf Surf City, Northport. If anybody's from Northport, you could comment on this uh, this brewery. I went inside. I was like, "Where am I? There's babies all around the, the place, and strollers, babies everywhere, and dogs everywhere." And I'm like, "I'm in a brewery. I mean, like, what's going on here?" I was like, "But you know, that they make it very. Um, it's very cool." So, um, you know, does anybody want to comment on that, sir? I believe it's called Sir Sand. I'm sorry, Sand City, Sarah. Sand. Sarah? Sarah, Sarah. No, yeah, Sarah, you're good. You're good. That's right. It's Sand City. Sorry. <laughs> Sandsy. Somebody yeah. had actually, Lance, somebody had actually asked earlier, are there any Nassau County restrictions on any of the Suffolk County parks you mentioned? Oh. Like, are they not able to get in? Okay. So, um, okay. So the green key card is for Suffolk County residents, okay? Uh, um, I'm just trying to think here for a second. Um, I mean, I know they can go to the the um, Smith Point by me, I know, but you have to pay. Like, the green key is there. And if yeah. you don't have a green key, you pay the full fee. Okay. So you I might mean, just, just have to pay. Right. Yeah, I, I saw, like, in our, in our Zoom meeting, there wasn't that many people from Nassau. Uh, so I'm going to just tell everybody from, from Nassau, I geared my uh, hidden gems to Suffolk County just to let everybody know. So if you're from Nassau County, you could still enjoy a lot of these places, but the, there's certain ones that you're going to have to pay a fee to get in. And I'm just sorry. That's mm -hmm. just the way it is. So, yes. Yeah, so that's, that's all I have to say about that. But I hope you still enjoy. You can still get something from this presentation, I'm sure. Um, no, there's still many of them that you can, yeah, you can go to. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, let, me, let me go on a little bit further, though. There's a couple other things I wanted to... Uh, Let's see, where, where is, uh, okay. Oh, so um, I wanna let everybody know that uh, sunflower fields are gonna be in bloom uh, in August, all the way to October. So uh, by then I would think that people could be walking outside through the fields, okay? So I had a list of 10 of them that are just beautiful. I mean, like I had the lavender by the bay, uh, walking through a uh, sunflower field is just very dreamy. Uh, Kelly, have you ever walked through a sunflower field? No, but I have done a lot of them, like you said. Yeah, I mean, it's just a beautiful. Um, uh, I, I try to do these every, um, you know, at the end of the summer or in 
the beginning of September, October even. Uh, I wouldn't go too late in October. They start dying. So, but um, definitely they're very popular. And they, they make mazes through them too. It's very, very cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, I talked about the local breweries. Oh, this, this Sand City. It's right over there. Um, I put a whole list of breweries there. Uh, like I said, Blue Point is one of my favorites. Yeah, Brick uh, House, Pat Shot. Okay, could you believe all these things that are popping up? This one right here that I have a picture of right here, really cool one. That's James Port Farm Brewery right in Riverhead. Really cool. And then you see hanging down here, um, those are hops. So that's what they um, you know put in lots of beer and especially IPAs. Uh, but really cool. They section it off and. Uh, it's again for the whole family this place they have tractor rides for kids and really really cool stuff obviously the kids can't drink the beer but they could uh, definitely get in uh with your family and i believe i saw pets there too so yeah a lot of these places that letting kids uh let in pets as well as on the outside however i'm trying to think like no I, I i no you can't bring the pet inside the brewery but you could definitely have the, your pets and your dogs outside um, and there's a whole, uh, Riverhead has a bunch of them. You could just go for hopping brewery. Like I call it like, uh, vineyard hopping, you know, or, you know, how they say bar hopping. You could go, uh, brewery hopping all in Riverhead is a bunch of them. Like I said, James Port, Long Island beer company, crooked ladder. Now, w one thing I have to say about uh, brewery hopping or vineyard hopping, and I have to say this just as a uh, public service announcement is obviously don't drink and drive, have a designated driver. Okay. Maybe take a bus. Uh, you know, uh, like a party bus or something like that. But, you know, don't definitely don't drink and drive. Okay. Uh, had to say that, right, Kelly? Um, all right. Yeah. I hope everybody enjoyed the presentation. Uh, take a look at the handout. Um, if you have anything uh, extra that you want to add to my list, feel free to email me. If you have any other questions or comments, feel free to email me. My email is on that handout. And I hope everybody um, got something from this. Uh, and again, get out there, social distance. Enjoy nature, get some fresh air. Perfect time of the year. It's, you know, I mean, beautiful. And enjoy Long Island, by the way. There's so much for Long Island that, that Long Island has to offer. Thank you very much, everybody. Yeah. Thank you, Lance. I'm, go I'm also going to include um, some of the comments that people put in chat about the different places to oh, go. Yeah, so you I, I, I can answer a couple more questions if anybody has any. Let me, let me see. Um, hold on, let me, I'm just looking at my chat. Um, Thank you, Deb, Teresa, so Pamela, great. Mike. Thank you, uh, Carolyn, Liz, Linda, Lorraine. And my God, thank you, everybody. This was, and by the way, this is like. Say that again, Kelly. Don't forget to check out what passes your libraries have. Oh, yes. Yes. And I, I really, uh, I mean, sincerely from my heart, I don't want anybody spending really any money not even one dollar okay um i really set this up for it to be uh you know free and, and by the way i set up all my um my places they're 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 peaceful places because usually there's not many people it, it, there's it's in nature you're outside the hustle and bustle uh you know so I, that's why I, I really made this list because some people don't realize what there is out there so thank you uh let me see uh oh i'm getting some more comments here um, CZ Muroff, thank you. Nicolette, I, I just like to say hi to everybody. Carolyn, you might want to look into the Riverhead cider. Oh, yes, Carol. Oh, Carol, I, I, Kelly, are you still there, Kelly? Yes, I'm here. I, lo I love it. And Elizabeth, I just saw that you were left off the email, so I'm going to make sure oh, you. Carolyn email. Hill, uh, if you're still there, uh, you mentioned the Riverhead Cider House. Of course, the Riverhead Cider House is awesome. That's true. Lots of fun. Great. They have hard cider there. Uh, very big space there. Musicians inside. Fireplace. They have outside. They have food. Very, yes, Carolyn, you're right. I, I, I'm gonna, I can't believe I don't have the Cider House. I'm going to actually, I'm glad you brought that up. I thought I had that on my list. Cider House. Very good. Um, I was left off the email list for Zoom. Yes, you, you will get to that person, Liz. Uh, Carol, uh, thank you. I'm, I'm, I hope you do. And by the way, they're not going to be hidden for long, right? Some of them. Michelle, thank you. Kathy, thank you. Liz. Carolyn, thank you so much. Teresa, quick note about Avalon. Uh, Avalon West Farm, I think it's called Entrance. Oh, yes. 
You're right, uh, uh, Teresa, if you're still there, um, you're right, I did, you're probably still there. You're right, Teresa. Um, you could access- I'm gonna, I'll add that. What's that? I'll add that to the uh, list when I send the that, PDF to people. No, yeah, Teresa, you're right. Um, I did. Uh, I did look into that. You're right about Avalon. You could get into one of the other entrances, but just to let you know, uh, those other entrances aren't the easiest to find, just to let you know. But yes, you're, you're absolutely right. You could uh, hike around those trails from another entrance. Um, thank you for that, saying that. Uh, Kathy, thank you. Lorraine, Patricia, uh, Carol, thank you for everybody. I, I, uh, I really, um, you were all great panelists here as well. Very nice, very involved. I had a great time, all right? I missed the beginning. We'll get, yes, you're gonna get a PDF of the list. Yes, Debbie. Okay, all right, Kelly. So um, I'm glad everybody enjoyed it. Yes, me too. Okay, um, thanks again, Teresa. Take care, be safe. All right, everybody. All right, bye-bye, Thank you. You're welcome, bye. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.